I'm Gene Cavassis. I'm going to tell you today how I'm going to take an old refrigerator and turn it into something like a steampunk fridge. So stay tuned. If you're interested or wondering what steampunk is, you need only take a trip down Google Lane. Or if you're interested in reading material, Amazon has several books on the subject. And if you're interested in those, I'll put a link in the description down below. I've decided I want to do this project next and uh, it's just an old refrigerator but I gotta clear all this crap off the top move it out so I can start painting it. The first thing I'm gonna need to do is pull these door handles off. I'm gonna use a little bit of like tile. I'm gonna use acetone to wipe down the front of this. Take the shine off of it and get it ready for paint. This is the Rust-Oleum paint, which is a copper finish, and it is an oil base, and it stinks to high heaven. So make sure you're in a well-ventilated area when you're applying this. When you're applying the paint, you know, you want to basically first get your coverage, but you want to come back and very evenly just kind of lay it out or using your, your roller. After getting the fronts done, I, I opened the doors, got the sides of the freezer, and then went ahead and did the sides of the uh, refrigerator as well. I doubt I'll do anything with these sides, but I wanted them to be closer in that color. Okay, now I'm not going to worry about down here because that's going to get painted in another color. I'm going to mask out because we're basically going to paint spray black in between. We're going to use this uh, Croylon Fusion and I've just masked out through here. Try not to get your paint over here and just kind of dust your, your color up in here. Peeled some of this off, so I'm going to have to do a little repair here. Not a big deal. I don't see a problem with just painting that in. But okay, now I can get started on putting some of the the front steel part look on. I picked up some polystyrene eight foot strips from Home Depot, and these are one and a three quarter inch wide by a quarter inch thick, and these should cut easy and work real well to make a faux iron front to the uh, to the refrigerator. Taking my measurements from the top to the bottom and making sure that I cut everything to the lengths I want. Make sure you wear headphones and eye protection. This material is flexible but I wanted to double check to make sure everything fits just the way it should. Now I'm going to mark where I'm going to want all the rivets to show up and I made kind of a jig with the drill press so each one was in the correct position. I took my time and drilled through these using half inch wood dowels. Um, I want to drive these in so that they're a tight fit and it just will give it kind of a, a rugged look. You could have used the rounded type and that's all in preference but I like the sharpness of these. After putting the wood plugs into everything, I'm going to take a knife and I'm just going to rough up some of the edging. It cuts fairly easy and also using a hammer, I'm just going to nick up the material. After spraying these with a basic silver paint, I'll set them over to dry. Okay, now that these have all dried up, I'm going to use a little bit of double stick tape and glue for each of these. You're going to want to cut all the double stick tape in short pieces, placing it in place, peeling that all back, and then using some liquid nail in between. 
the clear double stick tape is basically just to hold it in place while the liquid nail dries. Okay, so this way. So I'm gonna line this up. Getting everything in place and kind of tapping it in, you just keep moving through the whole process and I'm doing one piece at a time with the gluing. I'm liking the way this is turning out. I'm going to let this dry and when I come back tonight we can put the start putting some of the technique paint on it. So this is some old glove. I'm utilizing some old uh, water-based black paint and thinning it down to the point that it's almost like stain and then rubbing it with a rag just directly on your surface on the the PVC to look like iron and on the door front itself. This is water based so it's going to want to separate but coming back with a clean rag kind of rub it down wiping the bulk of it off but it gives it kind of an older patina look. What it also does is it sets in all the low points that you've carved, cut, or even on the edging of the copper finish. Okay, so now we've got the first of this going and this is just one of several little steps you're going to do. You can stop at any time. You can go as extreme or light. working through all this and then kind of patting it down. The great thing with this is I really don't think you can make a mistake. I mean if you do you just go back and kind of rework it like that. Just kind of tap it back into there. I think I've gone a little bit much on this so I'm going to try to now take a little water and dab some of it off. And I'm not sure if this will work or I have to wipe it down and start from scratch. Either way, we can do that. Okay, remember how I said you can't screw up? Well, I screwed up. So I'm actually now using a sponge with a scotch pad on it to kind of rub off this, but I'm actually, I'm actually kind of liking what I'm getting out of this, so it's going to let me get to a point that I can move on to my next steps anyway. Okay, well now I'm going to start um, doing a little dry brushing on this, and I want to work on some of the, um, some of the rivets around this and try to bring that up a little bit so you know you get a little bit of of I'm using the copper in acrylic now and get it on the brush and kind of drag your brush out and get it dry but what I want to do is just kind of dry brush on top of some of these just a little bit to, to make it look like it's got some some copper or some brass wire on some of this Hitting the, the edging of it a little bit. And then you can even kind of put a little bit of this just to try to brush a little bit of this out through. That'll help tint a little bit of this to give it a little more believableness. Okay, 
I'm now going to make aged some aged copper. I went on Google Images and looked up the copper, anodized copper, and kind of trying to imitate this basic look. Using a torn up sponge, you can come through here and just kind of tap it on and add your, your copper color along with the greens. It shows anodization. And uh, then come back and add some more of the black, which just helps to put some more aging in, and realism into the metal along that edge. The next thing I want to do is create a handle for the freezer and the, the lower part of this. And I looked around and I want to use some PVC pipe as the handle and I want, wanted to use some just like pipe fittings that would fit into to looking rustic. And I looked at the the mounting brackets and I'm a little concerned that they're too large because of here and then I went to the hardware store and they were out of stock with them. I could order them but I'm kind of wanting to get moving on this. Then I started looking around and I was in Lowe's. I started looking around and I found this little gem in the electrical department and this is a brass looking fitting. They were only about two dollars and eighteen cents and I thought this would be cool. It could hold the pipe, give it kind of a cool looking fitting, and then screw straight down into the the fitting allowing this to come out. I think it's going to look pretty cool. So I'm going to want to do a copper finish or a brass finish, maybe even brass because brass and the copper might look cool. Finish on these to get those ready to go and then also I started thinking about doing on this side maybe some some cool looking hinges that would also be done in a brass so they were kind of shiny and then roughed up but just kind of bold and strong looking coming through there so i'm going to use the same uh pvc stripping and i'm going to heat it to see if i could bend it down around the the edge of that to give it kind of a cool look so now I'm going to cut the PVC to the lengths that I need and measure down for both the top door and the bottom door. Also with these hinges, I want to give a basic figuring where the hinges are going to need the bends. I'm not sure what I want to do with the ends of them yet, but I'll get the bends going first. Using a heat gun, I'm going to warm these up and just this PVC is great because you can heat it up and then just using something like a hardwood board or something, you can push down and get that sharp, sharp edging that looks like this was had been formed down around it. I think this is going to work great. Now I'm going to go ahead and mark off for the other hinges and go ahead and get those cut. I'm going to heat those, bend them down. That's going to work out great. Then I'm going to go ahead, I think I'll just cut the ends on a 45 degree angle. Then I'll take the knife and I will rough those edges up like I've done on the, the iron working of them. Pre-drill these with some of the, uh, the rivet holes. Get those placed in. Now, glue up the uh, end caps. Get both these handles done. In this respect, we're ready to go do some painting. Now, I also added the grill that fits at the bottom of the refrigerator as well. And after spraying some bronze tone, I'm coming back with the gold. This part is going to sit roughly like like right here. But I'm almost thinking I may want to put a popper at the top and bottom to also help secure that and then I can just touch 
Dan zo. Touching everything up. You want to be careful when you're drilling through any of these the front door there's no vacuum or anything you need to worry about just make sure you don't drill all the way through everything I'm gonna add a rivet to the front of this touch up the two rivets touching up the paint now, the fun thing with this is rivets screw heads all this stuff looks great Let's get another measurement for the lower handle. Get those copper bells operated on, touched up. We're ready for the second handle. I'm gonna go ahead and set some screws into the front of them. That helps to lock the handles into place and they won't rotate on them. Okay, now we're to this part. So now these work. Great. I feel good about that. That looks pretty cool. And uh, our, our hinges that we built, and those will be installed on this side, like here and here. To still put some of the liquid nail, I'm going to set this one as the top, and it's going to go between these two bars. So the purpose of the sticky back is to hold it in place long enough or for the uh, the glue to set up. Let's do another one. Bring that up that way and go there. To the lower part. Now you could have done those hinges in iron, but I thought the contrast was fun. Now that I've put a coat of clear on it, I may come back and even add another coat. It depends, I'm kind of happy with a uh, soft sheen to it. So now I'm thinking I want to build something like a, a, a gauge on it. So I don't want a very big one. We're probably looking at the largest, five, five and a half, maybe six inches, you know, probably in five inch range, I think it might be nice. And, and probably set it in the middle or over toward this side just to kind of give it that that steampunk type look as well so my uh, bandsaw took a powder on me so I'm gonna have to use a jigsaw but I'm gonna start building this gauge or something that looks kind of close to a pressure gauge so I'm gonna get creative and I'm actually going to pull the lid off of a can of uh, Folgers coffee some glue on. You're basically going to imitate what you saw on the drawing. I've got that center ring cut out or drawn out. I'll cut it out next. But now I'm going to recreate that design of the pressure gauge. Now, drawing that design out, I'm going to go ahead and use the jigsaw, get this all cut out. This is the ring first. It's not perfect, but you're gonna sand that to perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the gauge face on this as well. Alright, that's got that ready to go. Now I'm going to put a link above to this Orbital sander that I, oscillating sander that I picked up. It's been a great tool and uh, I'll give you a review link at the top of your screen here for that. This works great for getting everything sanded down, smoothed out, and working in those tight spots. Now using an X-Acto knife, I'm going to go ahead and cut about a half inch in on that Folgers coffee cup lid. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue down that wood ring that I cut. Setting that down in place, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint the uh, gold color on it. This gives several layers, making a nice looking ring. Now, I'm going to use some copper foil, and I bought this for a guitar shielding project that I use, but it's going to work great here. I'll put a link down below to this material. It's inexpensive and does a great job for this as well. I'll take a squeegee and squeegee this down to a nice tight fit. And then with the X-Acto knife, I'm going to come back and trim out the material close and fold it over all the edging of the material. This is going to give a great look and a good strong copper look to this gauge. Now I really like the combination of the two colors. Now I'm going to take the drill, I'm going to drill through this at the top center, and I'm going to set a rivet. Then I went to the immediate straight below, drilled that, and then I came and just worked through this until I had an even consistency of rivets around. Now this almost has a nautical theme, but I love how that looks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and using that same black thin down with water like a stain, I'm going to put a coat all the way around on this and take a rag and just damply spot it down so that it gives it that aged out look that I'm looking for. And I'm really, really happy with how this is starting to look. Yeah, that's going to work out just fine. Taking the, uh, the gauge, I went ahead and eliminated any other colors. I'm going to cut it out and then just basically spray glue this down onto a scrap piece of the wood that can set up behind the gauge. Make sure everything's lined up. Then I'm going to take the hot glue and I'm going to put a couple of wood blocks that will help give me that distance between the gauge. Gives a little depth to this and that looks really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the double stick and then some of the glue and I'm going to set that into the center of the refrigerator. Okay, so we're pretty far on this, and this may be where you would want to stop or, or end this, but I'm gonna, you know, take it a little bit further because I feel like to be real steampunk, it should probably have some, some copper lines coming out of it and running, and maybe a valve that somewhere on it for running to this gauge, and just to kind of give it more of that steampunk look to it. So I picked up a couple of different items from uh, Home Depot, including a valve uh, handle and a, some of these plastic clamps. Now I'm going to spray these and these bright red, and that'll help tie in with a piece of half inch copper tubing that I picked up and some, these are 90 degree joints in this, and a T for that. Uh, for that valve. So let's start out by spray painting some of those pieces and then we'll move to the next. I'm going to come out here, I'm going to spray paint everything, do it from both sides, get a good coverage on it. Setting the uh, spray painted pieces to dry to the side. Using some of this right off the bat piece would probably be need, need to be cut about, I'm going to say four and a half engine. Greatly sharp. I'm hoping I can fit that up in there. And 
this part come down. Now, I think I need to trim this piece down a little more now. So now I've trimmed this down and I've trimmed that hole out here. So we should be able to just warm that up and put that in like that. Now we could use one of these little red clamps that I have and put those on like that. So what I want to do is make sure each of these fit properly. But what I'm going to add is just a touch of hot glue. Because I want these to really kind of set up good and thick. And then I'm going to take the little wood dowel and put together. And it's got to fit down in here. Okay, so here's my configuration and I'm going to want it to basically line up with this, like that, just like that. that to kind of straighten out what I want. So I'm going to place one right here. Okay. Now, do wow, this was a lot of fun to do. This was a really unique project for me taking that old crappy refrigerator and turning it into a steampunk fridge. Um, it's a very unique project, but it was a lot of fun for me to do. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section down below and I'll try to get back with you. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you soon. Oh, and uh, it's also a great way to keep my beverages cold.